it's Jacqueline. Today's video is going to be a Q&A, so I'm going to be answering some questions and yeah. So the first one is, how old were you when you first started making videos? Um, that depends what you're talking about because if it's YouTube videos, I would maybe say about a year ago, even though I wasn't really consistent. But if you're talking about making videos, pretty much my whole life, like since I since I was seven. I got my first phone when I was seven and pretty much all you could do was call, text, and take pictures or videos. And I made a lot of movies with my little cousins and when I got a laptop, we started making more movies. So yeah, I've just been sort of making videos since I was seven. Even on my laptop, I would record myself doing my makeup or I would talk about my life problems and all that. And I would talk to the camera like if I was talking to someone as if I was gonna post it or something. And then a couple years ago, I decided that I wanted to start uploading my videos onto YouTube. And I did, but I didn't post a lot of videos. So now I finally have the motivation to consistently film. How are you making the best of your quarantine day-to-day -day life? Um, making videos? <laughs> um, I've actually been doing a lot of painting, filming videos, and watching a lot of Disney Plus. I know it feels really nice to be productive and make a good use of your time, but I saw this one commercial. It was kind of cheesy, honestly. But I was watching TV and this commercial came on, and of course it was about coronavirus because that's pretty much all the commercials talk about. But it said something like, it's okay to rest. Meaning like if you're in quarantine, don't feel bad if all you're doing is just laying down and watching TV or sleeping all day or eating or I don't know because it's okay to rest. There's nothing wrong with doing nothing. I mean, yeah, if you have a lot of stuff to do and there's deadlines or you have homework or an essay, you should do that. But if there's a day where you don't have to do anything, then I feel like it's fine to just take a day to rest. So now I don't feel as bad, but I have been pushing myself to paint more because it's really fun. It's one of my favorite hobbies and it's something very time consuming. So you can't really get bored with it. And yeah, that's how I've been living my day-to-day -day life. Just painting and sleeping and watching TV and eating chips. How has your first year of college been so far? I am in my first year of college, so I kind of missed majority of my freshman year, which is honestly okay because I'm not dorming and it's not like I had like a bunch of friends, so I'm okay. But I will say it has been really good. And by good, I mean like I've been getting good grades and I've met a lot of cool people and I like the environment of the college campus. I started driving when I barely started college, so it was kind of like this independence I had just going to school whenever I wanted and getting food wherever I wanted but I have not had the full college experience like I haven't gone to a party I haven't gone to a big football game or I haven't even dormed so so let's just say my first year was neutral it was good and it was chill but nothing like crazy as much as I miss high school I love college and I'm gonna try to put myself out there a little more once quarantine is over because I do want some college experiences I don't want to just like go to school get my degree and just leave this one is really random but i'm gonna answer it which dog drives you the craziest this one is the easiest question i can answer i have four dogs three are at my mom's and one is at my dad's and the one that drives me the craziest is the one at my dad's her name is lola she's a german shepherd she's really cute she looks innocent in pictures but she is crazy there's been a few times where she's run away and we had to chase her and she just doesn't listen i can't count how many of my dad's hoses she's chewed she really loves water so when the sprinklers go off some Sometimes she bites the sprinklers and she'll break it and then my dad will have to get a new one. She sheds a lot so there's hair all over the house when we let her in. She barks at the neighbors and we've had several complaints. The cops came here I'm thinking three times, four times and she's always very hyper. She's always jumping on you. She's super heavy. She's always sprinting up and down. She really loves playing in the mud. But me and my dad love her with all our hearts. Even though she's super crazy and she drives us insane, my dad is really good at training her. So she knows how to sit when we want her to calm down. And we're teaching her to drop things. Like if she grabs my dad's shoe and she's about to destroy it, she's starting to learn what drop it means. And she'll actually like drop the shoe. So yeah, we love her, but she's crazy. If you can go back and change anything, would you and why? No, I don't really have to think about it. It's already a no, obviously. Obviously, I'm pretty sure you can ask a lot of people and most of them would say no because I think it's just the fear of thinking that you might be someone 
completely different if that one thing didn't happen especially if it's a big thing most people are like oh my gosh i hate myself i hate this about me i hate that this blah blah blah, blah. but then if we ask them oh would you go back and change anything then all of a sudden they're like oh no then i wouldn't be the person i am today like i love who i am and i'm always thinking why do you insult yourself then i'm not the kind of person that necessarily thinks that everything happens for a reason i don't want to get too deep into this because i actually want to do a video on this but to sum it up i think that no matter what happens there's always going to be opportunities that come out of each situation and it's just your decision whether or not you want to take those and make it into something good so not everything happens for a reason but you can find a reason out of anything that happens Ooh, that was good i just came up with that right now okay so this next one i left it best for last because i think it is the most important question how do i stay in a daily routine of prayer I always find it difficult to stay hopeful, especially with everything going on. I understand that a lot of people have it worse than others. There are people that are dying, there are people that are sick, but that doesn't make your feelings less important. Because when you say, oh my gosh, this quarantine is so boring, I don't know what to do, I'm just alone in my thoughts all day, people might say it's ungrateful, and I don't think that's fair to say that because there are a lot of people that are dealing with depression and anxiety, and this whole thing is probably triggering it or making it worse. So I can understand how a lot of people are having trouble keeping in touch with God and staying positive and praying and I'm gonna be honest it's really hard for me too because even though we have all of this time it's still really hard because you have so many distractions you have your phone you have your laptop you have Netflix I have my paint but one thing that really really motivates me to start praying is putting on some worship music even if you're not in the praying mood you don't want to talk to God I promise if you start playing your favorite worship song you'll most likely get into that mood I have a playlist on YouTube where I just have a bunch of religious songs whenever I'm down or sad or maybe even happy I'll play a few songs and I'll close my eyes and I just start thinking about life I start thinking about how grateful I am for my family I think about how strong I've become and how there's a huge future waiting ahead of me and then eventually I start to get really emotional and that's when I start thinking God that's when I start praying and that's when I start having a conversation with him so the hard part is not praying I think the hard part is just starting to pray because you don't know where to start sometimes you're not really in the mood and that's why I think putting on music really helps you get into that prayer setting. I'm not sure who wrote that question, but if you try it out, please let me know. I want to know if it works for you. All right, so that was my q and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Take your time. There's something about the love of things you like.